Hello, welcome to Spirit of Life. My name is Geraldine Lee, your host, and our guest is Jessica Smith. She's a coordinator of Young Adults Ministry to Women, and she's studying counseling. Hello, Jessica. Hi, Geraldine. <laughs> welcome to the show. Thank you. <laughs> um, I really want to know about your faith in God, especially being a millennial or a young adult. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, how, how did you come to your faith in God? Um, oh, it's, a, it's a long story. Uh, well, yeah, I, I was in high school. Um, well, actually, I worked through high school trying really hard. I was always told that I had to do really well, um, especially in year 12. And so I put a lot of pressure on myself and I did really well. But I felt like, I don't know, somehow I didn't get the attention or the fame or, you know, the reward of, you know, achieving something. I just felt like, oh, is this all there is? Um, and then so I convinced my parents that I would um, move out of home and live at college at uni so that I could really, you know, see the world and, you know, explore these things that I'd heard about. Um, and so, yeah, during that time I moved out and I made a lot of friends from different faiths mm -hmm. and, you know, I just like, I love dancing. So I always went out like three or four nights a week and danced and I just, I don't know, I just saw that they really struggled to they really struggled to find something to anchor them. Mm. Um, and even like talking with them, it was just, yeah, I just felt kind of an emptiness, like a quite, a, a really subtle emptiness, but throughout everything, you know, kissing mm. all the boys, trying to find ways to, you know, explore mm. life. It just felt like it just felt not solid. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, you, were, so you were having self-esteem issues and, yeah, and, and trying to, explore and find yourself. Yeah, I just felt really disillusioned. I was just thinking like, is this all there is? Um, and then because I'd done so well and got nothing from it in my first year of uni, I almost failed. Wow. And I was just not going to class. I just, you know, sat in my room and watched movies. And um, I bumped into one of my old friends who had given a year of her life to do a ministry called NET. Um, which is um, a group of young people who travel around the world, I mean, travel around Australia, sorry. Um, and they just run retreats in high schools and they spread the gospel and they just share their stories about how God has touched their life. Um, and so this friend I bumped into, she said, hey, Jess, maybe you should do net. And I was just thinking, I have no idea, like, I really should not do net because I, the things that I've been doing are not at all like a Christian. Um, wow. Yeah, and then a few weeks later, I got an, a letter in the mail um, and she'd written a letter saying that when she bumped into me, she felt like I really should think about doing net. And so I, I kind of applied thinking maybe this will be my way to, you know, to see if God really is there, if there is something yes. beyond that. So at that stage, you were doubting about the uh, existence of God. Yeah. And yet you're going to do ministry. <laughs> Yeah, it's strange. I think I was really just wanting to run away, run away to somewhere safe. Mm. And it felt like this might have been the place that I, that God led me to run away to, that He could really, you know, minister to me, you know, show me that He, he is real and that His love is real. Yeah, and so when I went off um, for a year, I just, I remember on the plane just crying and crying and just saying, please be real please let there be something. Um, and then when I arrived, I just saw all these, all these young people just like so themselves, like so happy with who they are, oh. so alive, you know, so full of joy. And I just, you know, asked God. I also asked Mary, um, I asked Mother Mary to help me because mm. I felt like I really didn't, didn't deserve to be there. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, one of when the you nights... you say Mother Mary, do you mean like as in you asked her to, uh, to pray for you? Um, kind of. I had like a conversation with her. I yeah. just said like, oh. Mary, Jesus is really intimidating. <laughs> I don't yeah. know if he's there. Yeah. So please, if you could, you know, help me. Yeah, oh, wow. I think I really connected to her because she was, you know, she seemed a gentle woman mm. that would lead me to God. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of like the communion of saints asking for prayers from her, like saying, saying, yeah. 
Yeah. Oh. And then, and then uh, what happened after that when you... Um, yeah, well, um, one of the nights of uh, the training that we had on net, um, there was like, it was kind of like, it was kind of like a Holy Spirit night. Um, we, we'd kind of spent some days learning about God the Father and then Jesus the Son. And then it came to this Holy Spirit night, which was when we kind of had to, we sang songs and we just were encouraged to open ourselves to the Holy Spirit. And I remember on that night, I really said an honest prayer. And in my prayer, I said, you know, please, if you're real, then you can just take it all, you know, just take, take everything because mm. I have nothing to live for. So mm. if you're there, maybe you can change this into something new. Wow. Um, and yeah, when I said that, I went, I went to the prayer teams. I had a courage then and they prayed with me and I, I just had this profound experience. I just knew then like that God was there and His love was like so powerful, so strong mm. that all my fears were just like nothing. They're nothing to Him. Wow. Yeah. And so after that, my, my eyes were opened and I was just so happy to be there at NET. That's amazing. Mm. Yeah, so from, from not knowing whether God was real, then suddenly you were going to reach out to people. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. a good time. So you had obviously prior knowledge of the character of Jesus, like you had it more in your mind, like you were brought up a Christian? Um, no, well, kind of. I, Catholic in the sense of like Catholic school and I did go to church on Sundays with my parents but we never really talked about God like not at all like I don't know I just yeah we did say a prayer for before meals but it's like the um, bless us all Lord and these are gifts like mm. we always just said that prayer so I never really thought that God would be like real be personal you know have a have a personality have a character mm. so it's a kind of like a cultural thing yeah yeah, so mm -hmm. that w that's amazing that you actually not only knew God in the mind, but you knew Him in your heart. You, you kind of experienced and felt His presence. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we need to go for a break. You've been watching Spirit of Life. We'll be back after the break. <laughs> Welcome back to Spirit of Life. My name is Geraldine Lee, your host, and our guest is Jessica Spitz. She does a youth ministry to young adult women. Welcome back, Jessica. <laughs> Thanks, Geraldine. Um, you spoke about your conversion of knowing God's love, mm -hmm. um, but I was surprised that you talked about self-esteem and that um, that you were challenged by that. How did Christ or Christianity reach um, you to, in a sense of self-esteem? Mm, that's an interesting question, because um, I guess I guess in the culture of going to high school and um, you know even after that. I think it's worse these days because of social media, but back then even, um, just having Facebook on all the time and all of your classmates kind of witnessing all of your failures and, you know, mm. and just having a sense that there's always a crowd of witnesses watching and criticizing you is really hard. Um, and these days with, you know, heaps of different platforms, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, you just really feel like you have to fit in a very particular mold and I guess um, yeah when I came to know God when I came to know Jesus it wasn't instant actually it took a long time of talking with God and hearing what he says about who the human person is you realize that we are so much more than just what you see you know in our physical looks in our clothes in what we have and that kind of empowers you to just you know like let, let it go like I mean mm. I, I have an Instagram account but it's not like I have to check it and it's not like that really matters all that much, you know? Mm. Yeah, it's more about who you are and then you want to meet others as well, who they really are. Yeah. Yes, and you were saying earlier on that you, the young people that you, were, that you met who were, had faith, strong faith in God, had a very 
good self-esteem and that kind of also attracted you to uh, your faith in God. Yeah, very much. Because I think all of us don't really want to fit. Like deep down, we don't want to fit into a mold that is somebody else. And so I think like ultimately we want to know the beauty of who we truly are. And yeah, just seeing how God can show you really what you can be and like help you put down those those mold th- those molds those expectations mm. those those rules that you feel like you need to follow then you're kind of free i mean you see in the saints as well you know each of them is so unique and so different like saint Teresa of lisieux she's so herself she mm. just says you know jesus carry me i need an elevator to heaven <laughs> like that's really you know unique it's nothing that you've heard before and all yeah. of us can be that voice, you know? Yes, yeah, so you felt that in a way Christ embraces your uniqueness, that you don't have to follow a tribe. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and also it gives you that sense of belonging. So you don't feel so much like you have to try so hard to be a part of, you know, a, a part of a specific group mm. or criteria that mm. you will find just as you are. Did you find there were some experiences that you had with the other young people on team that made you really feel accepted? How, how, how did they communicate that to you? Um, <laughs> the team is a very interesting experience. Um, it's kind of like a pressure cooker of the good and the bad sometimes. Um, I did feel like, I felt like I saw a lot of how I was trying to bring these expectations of friendship, of what people should think of me into team. Um, But like when I was able, when I could hear them say, actually, Jess, just tell us what you think. Just tell us, you know, what's going on for you. Then I felt like, okay. Rather than try and be like the others or or what's acceptable, you felt like they could, they, they, you felt you could relax. They, they gave you that permission to have a voice, yeah. your, your true voice. Yeah, and then yeah. we're all different and it's fine. It's, it's totally okay to just be free. Yeah. Mm. Maybe you can explain a bit about when you say team, what, who were the, these people? Uh, yeah, so um, on net, you kind of come all together. In, when, you, when you join, you come into a group of about 50 young people um, and you all get trained together in, in about a month. You just learn about how to do ministry and how to lead. And then they split you off into different groups. So that's your net team. And they send each team to a different place in Australia. And some of them travel around as well. So my f- I did two years of net. So my first year was in Sydney and on a team of six. And then my second year was in Townsville on a team of five. Wow. Yeah. And there's a, within... Uh, culture, you know, youth culture, there's a certain way that women or young women are to be portrayed and dressed. What, how do you feel that, uh, you know, what sort of could you say about the Christian clothing or, you know, (laughs) compared to? Um, (laughs) (laughs) Uh, There's a few, I don't know, it's hard to say. I mean, you could say wear what you want because you are yourself. Yes. I want, I want to see who you really are. But also, I guess there are those questions about modesty, you know, not drawing attention to yourself for the sake of, you know, sexual attention, that kind yeah. of thing. But I think uh, it's, yeah, it's hard to say it's, what yeah. really, yeah, I just, I really believe in people being able to express themselves yeah, yeah in how they, in how they dress and how they look. Yeah, yeah no, that's, 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 yeah, that's good because, um, you know, many people want to be in fashion or whatever, mm-hmm. and, and those words constantly change the trend or the what's in or whatever <laughs> it's saying is. Um, and sometimes the movie stars or the celebrities set the you know set the tune, I suppose, to mm-hmm. what is acceptable or not acceptable. However, if you can wear something confident, it, it doesn't really matter because you know you are who you are. Yeah, mm. yeah, and that th- and that speaks a lot, doesn't it? Mm, I think it's the confidence that wears the clothes in the end. Yeah. Yes, yes, rather than the clothing itself, mm. and not and if people make comments, um, not worrying about it really. You yeah, know, like cause because they, I think sometimes people test you to well, young people can test you and say, oh, that looks weird, that's, but if you just <laughs> say, hey, you know, I like that, so that's cool. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and. We've, um, what is the message you bring young people in your team? 
Um, well, I've, I've finished with NET now, and so I've done a few other ministries as well. Um, and so I guess, are you asking about NET specifically? Yeah, what's their main theme um, oh. like that they try to bring to young people? Yeah. Well, the theme, I guess, of NET is to um, encourage young people to love Jesus and embrace the church. It's really simple, you know, just yeah. love oh, Jesus and let him love you. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, we, on that note, we're going for a break. Mm. <laughs> You've been watching Spirit of Life. We'll be back after the break. Welcome back to Spirit of Life. My name is Geraldine Lee, your host, and our guest is Jessica Smith. She's a coordinator of a ministry that ministers to young women. Welcome back, Jessica. Thanks, Geraldine. Um, you know, you've been in ministry for quite a while and was, have been touched by God's love, and, mm. and uh, you've experienced a really good self-esteem through knowing God. And one thing I would like to ask you is about the power of God in your life. How have you seen God's power? Because that was very, that was what you were searching for a lot, wasn't it? The experience, because you knew God in your life because you went to church, but somehow you needed to know He was really real. Yeah, yeah. I think because maybe I'm someone who's really, um, I don't know, critical and analytical. Like I studied psychology in a science degree and I've always like to question things and so having this kind of mindset is really hard for me to have just like a simple faith mm. so I think God responded to that by c continually drawing me closer to him with experiences of him through people um, even just the other day I was driving with my friend and I just realized that you know through the last few years of struggling I've had a bit of anxiety as well and struggling mm. with anxiety mm. um, I just really felt like God I wanted God just to leave me alone, you know. I didn't want to go any further. I just wish He would, you know, let me <laughs> leave me there. Um, but then I just had this real feeling like, no, He's right there. He's gazing on me, and that just that glimpse of His His face, you know, a glimpse of His love, just like through the trees, driving alongside, you know, the Dandenong Ranges, and just seeing mm. the trees, and somehow that just moved me to tears. You know, He's still there. He's still cares about me and will carry me through and so that's just you know that will be for for everybody that's for everybody to you know to see and to find and to seek that God is actually chasing us he's actually pursuing us however hard things are yeah mm. and yeah I think that sometimes uh, even though I'm an older person I I get you know because I'm exposed to multimedia and you know Facebooks and different things like that I'm quite a lot on social media believe it or not I um, I find that it does make you wanna uh, think of me 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 and also to some extent you know when you see social media you want to have that nice looking place and everything to be comfortable and very everything to be instant because I suppose social media is instant mm. and there are times where I go this is too hard sometimes being a Christian <laughs> being loving and you know and yet like you said that you can call on God's power and mm. you know he whenever you feel tired or weary he he does want to bless us yeah yeah he always comes to want to bless you and to empower you encourage you yeah and it's hard to see sometimes I find especially with my friends and things there's so many voices telling us you know this is what's good, this is what's good, going to help you in your life. But then you find that that's, you know, that actually drew me to something worse and worse. Mm. But, you know, only God's voice really has said to me, you know, this is the truth. And I feel like as I live out my faith, He's never let me down. His voice actually does carry me to what's greater. You know, mm. brings me more confidence and more joy. Yeah, mm. and I suppose you... When uh, earlier on I asked you before the interview, I was saying like, what, what's going to reach the youth? And, and you said, I don't know, it's unique for everyone. And God, you were saying to me that God can reach people wherever they're at uniquely, like, mm. like you were being a bit of a scientist, you know, like, so he knew, God knew what would reach you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think in the end, it's just authenticity. I think there's so many fake products and fake ideals and 
all this thing that when something's really authentic, you want to chase it. And that's in friends, friends who are authentic, people who tell you the truth. And that's God as well. He chases you in the reality of today. Mm. Yeah. And when you find that real experience of Him, then you, you're good, you're solid. Mm. Yeah. And you, you started a group, I mean, you, you were for some friends started, Blessed is She. And is mm. that about um, ministering to women in their uniqueness? Is that what Blessed is She is about? Um, yeah, we hope it is. Uh, we've just started, um, but we do have a lot of young women and we all get together. I guess all of us have a different view of what sisterhood is, but I really wanted to, um, yeah, build a community of young women that we can just enjoy each other's company, minister each, to each other really just share life together yeah yeah and that's that's incredible and it's really good to have that and it's uh, it's um, brings hope mm. <laughs> thank you yeah. and um, do you, if a young person would like to um, further their faith what do you uh, uh, what sort of groups or things could they mm. go to yeah well uh, you any young women's welcome to come to blessed is she um, there's also alpha happening uh, in a few parishes, there's uh, at St. Benedict's in Burwood and St. was it Christopher's? At Sindel, they do an Alpha. Yeah. yeah, and so that's a really good way to um, kind of look at what God wants to offer and, you know, outside of the old, I see it as like the old terms and the old words that people use, a fresh yes. look at the gospel. Mm. Yes, I hear Alphas also in other churches, um, Anglican and u different uh, denominations too. Alpha seems to be a very... Um, big group that really reaches people where they're at, isn't it, about the faith of God? Yeah, for sure. Mm. Yeah. And um, and with um, your, what do you think, like, is prayer life sort of something that's in your life? Mm. Yeah, well, it's hard. <laughs> I hope it is. Yeah. Um, I talk to God a lot. So it's yeah. like for you, talking to God is like talking to a friend? Yeah, but a friend who's really... <laughs> really knows what's happening, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, and sometimes I think even further, more than a friend, yeah. I'd love for God to be, you know, a beloved, like in the Song of Songs. Um, yeah. yeah, so you like feel His presence with you and you you feel God like as the someone who really understands you. Yeah, someone who chases after me. But it's not hasn't always been like that. I know it won't always be. Yes, mm. but they say also God is like a father at times in a sense of a nurturing father way and also a father that knows what's good and bad. So they don't, he doesn't, he's not like a father Christmas, I suppose, who gives us everything we want. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I suppose if he did, we'd be fat, we'd be, <laughs> we'd be eating chocolates all day. And, mm. But he, he does what's good for us, isn't it? Yeah, and he's not a father who tells us off for nothing either. Yeah. Yeah, he's a strong and loving father. Yeah, mm. no, it, it's been great to ha um, have you on the show oh. and um, I wish you all the best. And mm, yeah. Thank you, it's and been with, with your ministry with Blessed Is She and your, and your course in counselling. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, God bless and keep you and thank you for being on the show. No worries, good talking to you. You've been watching Spirit of Life. Join us again next week. Goodbye and God bless you. Yeah.